Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today on Collection Lessons, I want to talk about value. It's part of my Collection Lessons series and everything I say on this channel is not any advice. And let's get going. So when I talk about value, I'm talking about the value that a lot of businesses always seem to refer to. Right? They're like, well, let's let's focus on the value, right? Let's let's focus on the big V, the, the value is what I'm talking about when I say the big V. The, let's focus on that, right? Because if we focus on that, then will we will create results and the reason that you know like in a corporate structure where there's you know a position and there's a supervisor above them that makes money off them and then there's a manager that makes money off them you know off of the supervisor and then there's like usually like the ceo owner right that's somebody's at the top of the structure anyway they're making all the money because of their results because of their results because of their results so usually the people in the bottom of this structure um make all the value so to speak right like it's like when you're when your supervisor is like hey i need you to you know implement this or look for a program that does this or i need you to find a way that does this and you know it's got to bring value to the company whatever you do needs to bring value to the company whatever company it is you know like a b c d e f g h i company or something and the reason that you know managers supervisors and everything will will blindly tell you to look at the value that brings to the company is because one day and i say this in a couple of my videos one day your company that you work for your employment in your e-quadrant will fail you i 100 percent believe that 100 percent of the time sometime in the future your employment place will fail you and it'll either fail you um based on a paycheck like they won't give you a raise or they'll fail you based on values. Like you'll have to do something against your will or against your values because it's company policy or some BS. Or, you know, there's multiple ways that a company can fail, basically, right? Is what I'm trying to say in the end. Um, and that's where it's like, you know, people get stuck constantly looking for jobs, either because of finances, because of, you know, the wrong people in the company or whatever. And I think it's because, and this applies to, I'd say 99% of companies. And if you're in the 1% company, Either your time is coming or it is truly the rarest of companies that you work for. There's some out there. Some of my friends are in them and they're great, but most of them not. And the reason that all of these people, the manager, the supervisor, and then you in the position is to create value is to create value for the company so that when you're gone, when they fire you, when they lay you off, when you quit, when you leave, the value is still there. And I'll give you an example like just in previous jobs alone that I've had. One was I was ripping tickets at a movie theater, right? So the value added that I brought to the movie theater was greater than what I was getting paid. That's the whole point of my position, right? If the value you bring is greater than the dollar figure, there's a sale there, there right? That's what I say in another video about um, value versus price, I think is what the video is on the, my collection lessons. But like, if the value you bring is better than the value that they're paying you, that's why they pay you 20 bucks an hour, right? Um, I think I was getting paid $12 an hour um, when I was ripping tickets. And my value that I brought was literally five seconds of ripping a ticket and pointing the direction to go with an open hand, because that was policy, with an open hand down the hallway, say your theater is number eight on the right, right? That was the value added, my five seconds but I would go through so many people, like every single person at the movie theater would come to me, every single one. And I had to rip their ticket. That was the whole purpose of my position, right? I'm getting paid $12 an hour. I'm probably talking to a thousand, um, maybe even, I think each theater was like 300. So like, I think it was about 3000 people it was the maximum of that, that theater that I worked at. So like 3000 people would talk to a guy getting paid $12 an hour. And based on me, based on somebody else like I think they're in the chain of of uh, sequence basically is somebody comes into the movie theater they used to buy a ticket from somebody making $12 an hour that's one person right for five I think usually it was like five minutes was the general under five minutes if you could sell a movie ticket under five minutes you're doing decent right what movie t movie you want to go to here's the price here's the times pay your credit card here or your cash or whatever Ponzi points you have and move along right you go to the movie, you know, ticket, that's one person. You go in concession, that's another person making $12 an hour. Sometimes there's two because they whip through people as quick as they could. That was another five-minute transaction, right? 
So that's one another stopper. And then they came to the movie ticket ripper guy. You see me five seconds and you move on. And then you go to your movie that lasts about two hours or so as a general movie, right? And then you leave and you see no one. You don't care about anybody on the way out, right? Sometimes they say, have a good day. That was policy too. But anyway, the whole point is these three people, one, two, and three, they created value. And when I say they created value, if you think of the movie ticket, so we'll say like the ticket was um, I don't know, 15 bucks, the popcorn was 15 bucks, and the ticket ripping cost zero, right? So these three indicators, like this one person paid 30 bucks. So we better sh make sure that they get a $30 movie experience so that they can justify to themselves why they're getting value because you can't make anybody, you can't force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. You gotta, you gotta justify the $30 they spent for greater value than the $30 were worth at the time that they spent. That was the point. That's the whole point of creating value. This is just one example in the movie theater. But the whole point is, at the end of the day, when they leave at this point, they're gonna justify or they're gonna judge and they're gonna say, did I enjoy my experience? Was it worth 30 bucks? If it was, they're gonna be a repeat customer, come all the way back to the start sometime in the future and do it again. They won't really necessarily, like so, there's some regulars and such, but they're gonna remember the experience of each of these people not necessarily the person themselves sometimes you get the rare odd one that would be like hey joe john whatever like so, you know great movie last time we'll see you this time like somebody came every two weeks or so some some people right but like the whole purpose is to create a revolving door of money a cash flow system for the company that's why they focus on value so when you leave when you leave they're going to remember the other two and then a new mr awesome is going to come in for 12 bucks an hour again replace you when you leave they're going to come get ticket ripped for five seconds with this guy hopefully it's a good experience and the combined experience of them all creates another great value point that they justify 30 bucks an hour or 30 bucks for a movie that's the whole purpose of why they you know why companies focus on value bring value to the marketplace provide value at another company that i was at um one of the you know things was how do we roll out software to 150 computers at once and how do we pull data from 150 computers at once how do we move machines how do we brand new machines how do we do everything i created a program um 10 years ago seven years ago 10 years ago i think now um that basically i was able to do um 150 hours worth of work within one hour and it was a great tool it was a program that i created when i was there at at that site and the point of it was i created so much value that you know, when I left, they could still use the software and I get no dividends from it. I still don't get anything from it. I don't even know if they're using it anymore, but basically that's, you know, what it was. So that's, that's why, you know, I create value for them. Now that's why everybody focuses on value. The problem is, is it gets lost in the sauce. The value gets lost in the sauce. People have their own value justifications, their own, um, value-based focused if they're value-based people. Um, that's where they start justifying things differently or wrongly, or the math doesn't add up. In a few situations where the math doesn't add up that I've run into that I've talked with friends, family, and that's kind of where I get some experience from this, as well as some, you know, books and videos and, and audio type stuff, is when somebody doesn't understand value. And the point is like, um, tires is a really good situation here. In tires in Canada in winter, um, when I was talking to a friend, we were talking about tires and usually like, you have a graph that looks like this. Either something is good in summer um, and something is good in winter. And in Canada, we have minus 40, so you need something of both or else you have two sets of tires, which nobody really wants to afford that. Most tire graphs look like this. Either it's really good in summer or it's really good in winter. And then there's some all weathers around here, right? That's usually the line that the graph is on. Now, you know, when people look at tires, usually they don't consider how good of a grip really matters out in the wild. So they usually get the cheapest tires, they're usually pieces of crap, and they don't last as long. And they don't realize the value in a good tire. So this tire that's here, both summer and winter, probably like for an SUV, somewhere around um, $200 per tire, which generally is $800 for four tires, because you probably have to change them all at once. And then they usually last 40k or something, right? So $800 is kind of the benchmark. And somebody will say, well, and, and then these are the new tires that came out there. Um, uh, I forget what they're called, cross something, track something, whatever. Anyway, they're a brand new way of doing tires. They're really good and they cost a little bit more. 
But the idea is, is they basically moved the scale from here to here, so they pushed everything out so it's a much better tire. So, those ones were at 200 These ones are at $400 a tire, which basically, you know, doubles the cost, because now it's 1600 for tires. And you get 100 k out of them. Now, you can look at this, and you can easily see which one is the better deal, right? But people will say... Because they don't put a value on grip, they don't put a value on their life in a vehicle, and they value the tire as a crap tire, it doesn't matter, it just needs to be to A to B, whatever, and they'll pay the cheapest option. They don't understand that you pay the cheapest option, and then you replace it soon. You know? It's crazy. It's like, not only is it double the cost, it's also double the, you know, the length, and then some, and you get better grip. Like, they don't understand this. This is where the value is. The value is in the grip. The value is justified by the price, you know, of the grip, if it's worth it. But like, even if these tires were like the same, you know, if, if this turned out to be like, let's say 80k, I would still pay for this tire. Why wouldn't I? I get like 2x more grip, let's say, and it lasts twice as long and I pay this. It, it's the same. It's the same over the same time frame. So like, it doesn't matter if you buy it at 1600 up front. Or 800 up front and you've got to replace it twice as fast it's the same like people don't get that but like the value like it, there's two options here it's like which one would you pick most people would pick the cheaper option if they were exactly the same and then they don't even consider the value part of it. like there's there's grip and there's protection and you can avoid stuff better and you could actually get moving in minus 40 and like they don't understand this part this is the value right people will think this is the value no, the value is in the actual product itself. It's kind of like you could go to like a dollar store and get like a cheap item, like let's say a tool. I don't know what the tool is, doesn't matter. The tool is a dollar at the dollar store, okay? It's gonna break five times in the year. So you're gonna have to replace it. Every so what's your yearly cost? Your yearly cost is five or five dollars per year. Or yeah, five dollars per year, right? And then if it's like, if you just not go to the dollar store and just get like a good one, let's say a decent one from, I don't know, Canadian Tire, you pay five dollars and it lasts you a year what's the cost the cost is the same right and it lasts you a year but then people don't understand the last part where it's like if you get like a ten dollar item from like say a top notch i don't know costco probably tool where it costs ten dollars and you go to place it every five years people are like whoa now it's like it's like ten dollars right um to get it and you know am i gonna use it over five like it's ridiculous it's obviously this is the better deal it's over five years instead of like three months or two months or whatever but people won't see it like that they'll see ten dollars and they'll be like well no i only need to spend a dollar on this thing they don't realize that they're spending a dollar multiple times a year or five dollars once a year or ten dollars every five years they don't understand that because if you justify it if you put it into a yearly thing this ten dollars is actually two dollars per year that you're paying but you pay ten dollars up front and i'll go into another video where like the whole zero percent apr and that type of thing how that all kind of works against you but it's crazy you know you got to look in the value the value is like this could last five years it could last 15 and it's ten dollars and it's made out of let's say solid metal rather than the other ones are made out of plastic or wood i don't know what the tool is but like they don't understand quality they don't understand the value behind it right it's like i have a you know ten thousand dollar server people will be like wow that's expensive i can make one for a thousand bucks great i didn't ask you for one but like two i know this server is going to be like it's held stuff for 10 15 years and it's still going you know it's i still got the same data on it, it hasn't broke down sure you have outages once in a while but like i buy quality products because i see lots of value in them whereas people will buy like a cheap computer or people won't upgrade their ps4 to ps5 right they don't see the value in it it's there's tons of value in things, but of course, everything is justified by yourself, which is unfortunate in most cases. But anyway, that's how I want to share with value. Value is created, right? Like the whole experience of going to the movie theaters and stuff, that's value created, right? And it's also transferred. And so that's, that's what I want to talk about value about is like, it doesn't matter. Usually you're paying for it anyway, but mostly look at the quality that it brings, right? Rather than direct numbers, because numbers aren't everything. And I don't know, that's, that's just my kind of perception. It's kind of like, like lots of games, sim type games, like, um, 
like Roller Coaster Tycoon or um, Sim type city type stuff or Jurassic World Evolution. That's a great one that I was playing um, a little bit ago. I want to play the second one that I got, but it's like usually they have like a slider on their park, right? It's like you could charge an admission fee into the park and it's usually like on a $1, let's say to $5. And then you can drag this slider on the, on this graph and you can, you can charge more, but you're going to get less customers or you can charge less, but you're going to get more customers. It's like in the end, it's like the dollar amount is still the same, let's say. Like, either you're getting 100 customers at 5 bucks an hour, or you're getting, like, 500 customers at 1 bucket, you know, an hour or whatever. Like, whatever the scale is. But, like, it's the same in the end, you know? But what's the quality of people coming through the door? Nobody asked that question. Nobody asked what's the value that is created. Is this a one-time thing? Or is it, like, a continuous loop of value that they, you know, come the next time? That's an ongoing cash flow system, right? That's what we're trying to create. So that's what I want to talk about value is everyone talks about value, but they don't really understand it. They don't get it. And it's like, what do I bring value? Um, value. Um, yeah, cool. I can run these reports and now you can run these reports forever. And they're like, cool. Now you're fired. And you just create a value to replace your job, right? Because why would they pay you if they have all the reports and stuff they need? And that's where like consultants come into play. And sometimes managers I've seen so many times get into this idea of a consultant because they need like a one-time thing to let's say generate reports or do this one-time thing but they don't realize like or maybe they do realize even that that consultant is creating on-go cash flow from that point on and they paid him for like a weekend rather than like they could have played an, an entire salary for someone for a year but instead they went the the value-based route and they, you know, just hired someone for a weekend to create value for the company to boost up the sales to do whatever so that they get more money. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's what I want to share with value. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you kind of see the value is basically more in the product or the quality of it. And it gets left behind at companies or it gets left at the, you know, in the actual product rather than on the people that have created it. And it's like if you aren't getting dividends from the value you create you, and you want those dividends, you want to be paid for the next. 20 30 years that your software is created that's why licensing agreed like agreements and stuff exists right it's crazy so anyway that's why i talk about value it's enough of value for me hope you guys are doing well thanks and talk soon